Now, a lot of people are starting to get their Broncos. So how do you make your Bronco stand out from the rest of the herd? Well, you spend a little bit of moolah on Amazon. And today we spent $500 on amazon.com and we bought some really cool, unique products that will make your Bronco stand out from the rest of the pack. We got some LED backlit letters that are gonna replace Bronco right here. And we got some Raptor inspired fog lights that are gonna go right here in your modular front bumper. And Erica, we're gonna tie it all together with a nice rugged brush guard. Now you might be thinking, how did you get all of that for $500? Well. We went with some brands that might be a little bit sketchy, you know, not your typical made in USA kind of stuff. So the point of this video is we're going to see, does that stuff hold up? Is it worth it? Should you spend your money on it? Or should we have just thrown our money into the trash? What do you do with all your money? Everything burns. And Erica, I think it's time that we get started. Let's go. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see how these mods hold up over time. Because who knows, it could look great today and... Not, Not so, so good great. tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> so let's go. I'm really excited. Today we're going to start by installing brand new letters on the front of our grill, but they're not just plain letters, they're actually light up letters. Now these are comparable to the Oracle grill lights, so I'm excited to get them on, see what they look like, and see how easy they are to install. So let's go. Okay. So these are the instructions right here on the back side. That's a tool. These are adapters as well as plugs. So as I'm pulling them out, they actually feel pretty heavy duty. Like they don't feel thin. They don't feel cheap. Like honestly, these feel really nice. Um, and they feel like sturdy too which is great. The wiring feels like the wire cord right here feels pretty good. Doesn't feel like it's gonna fall out or anything stupid like that. I know one of the things that some people commented on that they don't like is the fact that this is not an actual cutout. Instead, it's just like um, a plastic piece in there, but I don't mind that personally. And there's the R. So we have everything all set right here. We have all the tools that we need. It even gives us actually, let me show you guys this. It gives us these nice little sticky clips that we're able to use on the inside of the hood to have our wires properly sorted. That way they don't get all, they don't hang loose. They don't fall, fall everywhere. They're there and we can stick them wherever we need to clip the wires into there to keep them in place. The first step that I need to do is I actually need to remove this top this top piece right here. And there are clips that are right here that are holding it in place. So I'm using a pry tool to go ahead and get under and lift it up. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this, like I said, is to get down underneath to get to the screws that are holding the grill in place. That way I can remove the grill to access the grill letters. So I'm just gonna go ahead. They have a little nook right here. We can go ahead and take the part of your pry tool Get it under and push it up a little bit. Be careful, you don't want to snap or break anything. Did you guys see that fly? That's what I was concerned about, which is why I liked that the other piece just came out as one piece. Because it flew. So I went ahead and removed all of the clips. There are nine of them in total that holds this piece into place. So now there's only one more thing holding it into place. Now I do want to clarify, there's more than one way to do this. I decided I wanted to remove this piece right here, the air inlet, um, just to make it easier. I don't want to try risk breaking any plastic or anything, but you could leave it in and kind of lift this up and screw or even try to pull it out from under, but I would just rather take it out. So it, all it is is a clip you can push and then lift up, and there you go. Next, what I can do is I can now lift up this plastic piece right here. The reason I wanted to put these on my car, there's a few different reasons, actually. One, I'll be honest, I didn't know these were a thing, and then I randomly found them on Amazon when I was looking up Bronco accessories. And at first, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they looked a little cheesy, but the more that I looked at them, the more I realized, man, I could actually like those. I like the way that they look aesthetically. They remind me of the light up emblems, I believe on the Mercedes Benz, um, that light up in the front when they're driving. And I always thought that kind of looked expensive. 
So I'm curious to see if that's gonna give me the same feeling. Plus it's just gonna give me a little bit more light too. It's not gonna be like obviously a headlight, but it's gonna give me a little bit more light. And it's just gonna make my vehicle stand out compared to others. I know I see a lot of Broncos out here in the desert and every single Bronco I've seen has some kind of personalization to it. So that's what I wanna do is I wanna make this Bronco mine. It's already mine, but I want to add things to it and, and make it customized to me. Oh, no. <laughs> it's in the grill. Okay. I'll be able to get it. One of the things too that I noticed is I saw a Raptor, a Bronco Raptor on the road for the very first time. And I was looking at it and at first I was like, that's like a hot, that's like a pricey Bronco. They did a lot of stuff to it. And then I realized that was the Raptor and we drove next to it. We drove beside it for a little bit. Um, and when I saw the videos and the pictures of the Raptor, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't it wasn't my thing. But then I, when I saw it out on the road with the headlights and the the big fenders and everything, it was it looked so good. And so that's kind of why, even with the fog lights, I'm kind of going Raptor inspired. Um, but these guys, sorry. Um, but the reason why I want to put on the letters and, and you know, with that in mind, with the Raptor is because I don't have the same headlights that the Raptor has, but maybe giving the illusion that I have a little bit more light in the front, I don't know, but I was definitely more impressed than I thought I would be. The next step is after you removed all the hardware like I did, there are a few clips that you need to get to to be able to remove the grill itself. And this is something I'm gonna be honest, I'm really nervous about because last thing I wanna do is crack something or break something. Yep. Okay, so that's one. Is there another one over yep. here? There's actually two on each side. I push it down and I pulled out at the same time on the other side. There okay. you go. Oh, Ooh. I just pulled right here. Yeah, you so. did. Okay. There ah! you go. There you go. Oh, what are we stuck with? This, up. Oh. There we go. Okay, all right. That was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Now what we are going to do is remove these uh, plastic rivets because the factory letters are actually like pushed in there and then they melt the plastic on the back. So we actually need to drill that out. Whew, that one just popped right off. Oh, that scared me. What I needed to actually get to and feel is I actually needed to almost, I needed to drill way down, not straight through the letter, but into the letter. I needed to drill into the letter. That way the plastic piece that was there would just essentially break. So I was really nervous about going through the letter or anything like that, but it looks like it was fine. I, you can kind of see that where I drilled into the letter, but I got rid of the piece that was holding it in. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Ooh, that one I did drill through the letter. Okay, let me see. Not yet. <sighs> oh, that one was hard. So this one was a little bit more challenging for some reason. I don't know if it's because the plastic got a little bit more like melty or what happened, but I did accidentally drill through the actual letter, but I mean, I couldn't take these exact ones and put them back on anyway. If I wanted to go back to stock, I'd have to get new letters. So no harm, no foul. I went ahead and I sanded down the holes to the point where they're almost basically flat, which is good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking out the letters and I'm gonna start putting them in. They do have a little hole on the side of each letter for a cord to be able to go through. So that's perfect. So the cord goes through and then the pegs line up. There we go, we got one in so far. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking this piece right here and pushing this onto the backside of the letters onto the pegs to hold the letters in place. Uh, they did give me a tool for this, so I'm gonna see if I might need to use the tool. Otherwise, I feel like I could probably push it down with my fingers, but 
I'm going to try the tool first. Let's see. So this is not easy. These things kind of suck. Um, the pegs go through the hole and the hard part is that they don't sit flush because obviously your grill is curved. So I put my arm underneath it and I actually have this T tool that is, um, it's used instead of a socket wrench. So I'm actually gonna take it, it has the 10 millimeter socket on the top of it. And I'm just gonna take it and it gives me the ability to put a little bit more force onto these. It's slowly moving down. A little bit more. So far, I've got to say that is the hardest part. It is a pain in the butt, that is for sure. I wish that they had better locking mechanisms for the back, but uh, you win some, you lose some. Okay, so what we have next is this cord that actually feels like really sturdy. It, it feels like they probably wrapped some kind of tape around it so it's sturdier. And it goes, it's basically gonna connect to all of the letters and then it goes to a grounding wire and then a piece that goes into the fuse box. So I need to go ahead and connect these to the back side of the letters and then I'm gonna use the little adhesive clips that they gave us right here to go ahead and make it look pretty. Now, there's a specific way you have to do this. I need to make sure that the grounding wire and the fuse plug actually end up on the driver's side of the car because that's where my fuse box is located. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure it goes in the right way because there is a little groove in here that needs to go right on the correct way. And there's one. Now we're just gonna go along and do the same thing. And then once I get everything kind of plugged in, I'll go ahead and see where I want to put those clips at, the adhesive clips. That way I can figure out how exactly I want to maintain um, the cords and make sure it still looks all clean. So the next thing we, we want to do is we want to put on the adhesive clips. However, looking at the back side of this grill, it's pretty dirty, pretty muddy. So since we already have the grill off, we're going to go ahead and use this all purpose cleaner to be able to take off some of that mud. And then after that, we're going to use some alcohol in a spray bottle to ensure that the adhesive pads get good adhesion onto the back. So we don't have to worry about them falling off and my cords going everywhere. Originally, I thought I was going to put these clips on the back of the letters, but I realized that if I were to do that, you would see the wiring, and I don't want you to see the wiring. So I'm actually going to route it up here like this. That way, when people are looking at my grill, you can't see the cords. All you can see is the letters. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm actually going to apply this clip facing up. That way I can clip it in, no problems. I think I'm gonna put it like right there. There you go. Are you so, ready? Are we pushing? Yep. Nope. Oh. Okay, my side's totally tucked in. Okay, so we have the grill back on the car. We have the wire coming up through here. So now what we're gonna do is we have our two plugs right here like this. We have the fuse tap and then we have the grounding wire. I also have a socket wrench with an eight millimeter socket because we have to actually unscrew one of these bolts to be able to put the grounding wire underneath it. Okay, there we go. Our grounding wire is on. What I need to do next is I need to go into my fuse box to remove one of my fuses in the 10 amp area. That way we can plug in the actual fuse tap. So just give me a second. This is made for people with larger hands than myself. There we go. Okay, there's our lovely fuse box. So we're gonna be taking out 
this fuse right here. And the reason we're taking out this fuse is because that's what it says to do in the directions. Um, we will see what happens when that does work. Let me see. Now I'm gonna take this fuse tap right here. It actually has two 10 amp fuses in it and I'm gonna plug it in to that spot. One thing that bothers me already is I already know when I put the cap back on this, the wire is either gonna prevent the box from closing fully or it's going to push the wire and hopefully not cause damage to the wire, but I could see that potentially causing damage in the future, so that does make me a little worried, but we're gonna see how it goes. Since you went ahead and swapped in the fuse tap into that, what was it, a 10 amp? Yeah. Let's go ahead and test it before we button everything up and okay. let's see what the, the, the way it works just based on the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop in and turn it on. Okay. I'm gonna start with just power. So I'm just gonna, I'm not actually gonna start, start the engine, we're just gonna do power. Okay. Guys, I'm really nervous because I did all this work myself just using Devin as an extra set of hands. So I'm really nervous if this is gonna work. So you might have noticed at some point in the video, I, all of a sudden my nose looks really red <laughs> and it looks like I have a scratch. Um, note to me and to myself, when working in a garage that has boxes, you want to pay attention to where you move your head because I was getting into my Bronco, turned around and smacked my face against a box and gave me a paper cut across my nose. So um, battle wound, I guess, or I don't know what to call this. But yeah, don't be me. <laughs> so I really liked the way they look and I'm happy that they work <laughs> because I was really nervous that they weren't going to. Um, but my question is, is I know I have auxiliary switches. I would love to actually be able to use my auxiliary switches. Is there a way to then connect these to the switches? I know that we have the, the wire bundle here for the auxiliary switches, but this comes with a fuse tab. Is there a way to do that in here? One possible way that I can think of is that we cut the fuse tap off. However, I do believe there's actually fuses that maybe we could swap out in the fuse box, a different fuse that correlates to the switch that you want. So let's figure out um, what switch you want, and then we try to find the fuse that matches that switch. Okay, let's do it. Switch one, I believe, has 30 amps. Switch two is 15 and the rest are 10. Since these are such a low power draw, we should go with one of the lesser ones. And just so you don't start in the middle of your auxiliary switches, let's start at the end. Okay. So that would be auxiliary si six. Okay. Yeah, switch six. And the fuse that correlates to that would be number 65, which is gonna be a 10 amp right here. Why don't you go ahead and work on pulling out the 65 fuse? Well, let's pull that out, replace it. Yeah. So undo the work we just did, and then we'll pull this one out and try the fuse tap here at uh, number 65. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the negative side of the, of the battery. Um, that way I can plug it in and it'll, it'll reach just fine. Okay. Hot, hot. Okay. Okay. That's on, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten it. I can go ahead and put this guy into that terminal. Now we take the fuse box lid and put it right back on. And now we have to reassemble everything else. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was concerned about. You know what though? Did it shut? It shut just fine. So while looking at this, I realized I had taken out some bolts I didn't need to earlier. So I'm putting them right back. What did you do? I mean, 
like literally earlier when you were uh, taking stuff off? Yeah, you're only supposed to take out four bolts, not eight. So maybe one of the bolts you lost, you didn't actually take off? Yep. Because the only bolts I needed to take off were the so bolts that, that connected. connected yep. Don't get overexcited and just start going. Look and see what you're doing first. And see if what you're doing makes sense. Because now that I'm looking at this, it makes no sense for me to have taken off those other ones. I was just so excited. So the next mod that we're gonna do is the Raptor inspired fog lights, which are gonna go directly into my modular bumper. So the first step of this is removing these four Bronco bolts right here so that we can go ahead and actually put the, the housing right here and then we can screw it in. Probably the easiest part of this whole process. <laughs> once I break the bolt. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So Erica was trying to use the T40 that came in the Bronco toolkit. Ow, smacked myself in the head. And while she actually did, applause for Erica, managed to get one out by hand with that. It was taking too long and she couldn't get the top three out. So we went ahead and found a little T40 bit that I attached to a drill. If you have like a driver, that would probably be better, but we managed to get the job done. Uh, but definitely better to have a power tool because you could be here all night trying to do it with this hand tool. So that's what we had to do. And now it's time to insert the fog lights. So let's tuck the wires through the back. There's adjustments here that we're not gonna mess with right now. I think Erica might be able to get her hands in here. You actually could and adjust it if need be. So let's just get them installed. Uh, let's see, do they kind of pop in or? Oh, there's actually an audible click. Nice. This is a cord that I need to feed through, down through the engine bay to the lights. This guy needs to get to the right side and then we're gonna snake this guy over to the left side, basically under the frame, but still in the bumper. But to start, I'm gonna go ahead, there's a gap between this right here and this tube right here. So I'm just gonna carefully feed that through. We made a mistake and we started following the uh, instructions here and it says, you know, take out the Bronco bolts, put in your fog lights, then install fog lights, and then wire. Well, in reality, we probably should have dropped the wire up top like Erica did and is doing right now, connected everything and then installed once we had all the wiring done. So, yeah. oh well. So I need to just pull this through because I need to get the other part down here, but I'm trying to also make sure I don't pull everything. So we have a connector here that we're gonna connect to the sky. Uh, just wanna make sure it goes in the right way. Yep, that's right. Okay, that's in. Now, these two pieces are gonna hook right in here. And there's one. Oh, this one's giving me difficulty. Hold on. There we go. There's two. Okay, so that side is done. So now we've got to feed this to the other side. Alrighty guys, so what we did right here is we have this piece of the wire routed through right here. There's a crack right here. So basically I held it in my fingers and just slowly worked it its way through. It wasn't that easy because there's a few screws and things in there that kind of got in the way. But if you're patient and just keep it up, um, you'll be able to get it through. It is on top of the bash plate, but underneath the bumper, it's lit it literally follows this crack right here at the bottom of the Bronco. Okay, that's nice and snug. Next one. Make sure that's the right way. Nope, it's that way with the uh, little bump there. No, it should click, yeah. So make sure those are both on there, they are. And we'll probably end up zip tying these somewhere to keep them uh, safe, but let's go ahead and connect them to the, har the harness. We're gonna go ahead and connect them to the harness that we just pulled through. Let's see, that should go there, I'm guessing. 
got some on my skin. So we have some stuff here that we're not necessarily gonna use. Why not? Because this is a remote, which is pretty cool. So you could then change the uh, color of the lights with the remote. But since you have those auxiliary switches that we're utilizing, just like we did for the lettering, we don't necessarily need these. So instead of using these, as well as this connector, um, this is more of a just personal preference. We're gonna go ahead and use some uh, heat shrink butt connectors. So they work the same, but instead of being all in one, we're just gonna do them individually, put them in there, crimp them, and then you can take like a lighter or heat gun and it's gonna give it a more waterproof seal than I believe this will. Okay. So we're ditching those and we're not using the remote, but I don't think you care because you have those overhead switches, right? Yeah, exactly. We put your letters on auxiliary switch six. So we're gonna put these two on the two before that, which would be four and five. Why do we have two different wires? Because there is actually, since there's the white and the amber, they both need their own dedicated switch. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the back there and we're gonna take your, your red and your yellow wire and we're gonna connect those to whatever switch four and five is. Now I believe um, switch four is gonna be a brown wire. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take the brown wire and connect that to our red. Okay. So that will power our white. And then our for switch five, that's gonna be a blue and orange wire and we're gonna connect that to the yellow and the amber. Okay. So in your overhead, you're going to have switch four, which will be white. You're going to have switch five, which will be your amber. And then of course, switch six from earlier will be your Bronco uh, letters right here. Perfect. All right. So let's get to wiring. Let's do it. So I'm going to take your red wire here from your fog lights, which Al should be um, your white lights. Mm -hmm. We're going to plug that into this butt connector here. I'm going to push it all the way as far in as I can. Then this, this is brown. Yes. That's weird. Interesting, okay. We're gonna poke that all the way through. Power on. Okay. Aux four going on now. Yep. Aux five going on now. Yep. So they work? Yep. Perfect, oh wait, just for funsies, aux six. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, and that way it's tucked. Yeah. But the fuses are also literally right next to the fuse box. Yep. And then you can still access this panel. Yep. Oh. Here, let's just go this way with it. Okay. Oh, hold on. There we go. Literally, yeah, it literally is four, four bolts. Four Bronco bolts, huh? That's it. All right. Okay. How's it look? I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, that's interesting. Feels like a different texture than like the bumper, but it feels solid. So, remove four screws, move eight screw screws in to total. Put on the front and middle net guard bar and install after eight screw holes are aligned. Screw in the screws one after another all four screws on each side shall be tightened. Installation is complete. That so is literally four that four. is literally six six different instructions for take take, take the bolts out, put, put the bar in. on, put the bolts back in. Okay. Oh, that was easy. We haven't taken these ones out, did we? No. So let's just. Uh... Okay. Look at that. So this is the washer. It's painted black, but the uh, paint quality is not that great. But uh, at least you won't really see it.
started in the daylight, it is now dark outside, but you know, everything's starting to really come together. Erica, what do you think of everything that we've done so far? So the last thing that we did was the brush guard, which I have to say was the easiest thing that we had to do. Like it was just unscrew and screw, but I mean, it's sturdy. It's not gonna go anywhere. It feels good. I think it looks good and I think it's gonna look even better with all of the lights on. And I think it's, I, I think it looks good. I just I had to get used to it. I haven't had something like this on the front end of my vehicle ever. So this is something I have to get used to. Um, we also did the grill lights, which I absolutely love. And then we also have the Raptor inspired fog lights, which I also absolutely love. So I'm excited to see how everything holds up. I'm excited to see if this brush guard is gonna be something I keep on my vehicle or eventually take off, I don't know. Um, but I do think it looks cool. I like the idea that the brush guard is unique compared to a bull bar. I feel like every Bronco has a bull bar, but not every Bronco has a brush guard. And at the end of the day, Erica, if you don't like anything, pretty much everything we did is reversible. You probably have to get some new letters because we did drill out the old ones. Yeah, we did. Um, but you know what? I don't see you. You actually really like those, so I don't see you ever going back on those. I don't think so. I really like them. If you were to get another Bronco, would you do the same thing? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I think it's fun. Okay. And Brush garden, hate it or love it, we'll see. Um, live with it for a while, you guys are gonna see it out on the trail and we'll see if it actually helps. You know, sometimes we actually are hitting shrubs along the side here, so maybe it'll help, who knows? Maybe uh, you'll fall in love with it. If not, it's uh, basically, what, eight bolts in total? Yeah, that's it. And take it off, like that was the easiest thing and that's why we saved it for last. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.